focus of the TRIC project is uh, conflict and identity, collective identity, how collective identities are shaped and reshaped by conflict. And we are looking at it through a particular uh, way, through a particular method, by studying the material culture, the, uh, uh, the material objects, uh, monuments, places uh, where conflict had happened or are happening. In some particular cases, we can see where these changes do not occur incrementally, but revolutionarily. Uh, like, for example, in conflicts, uh, like, for example, in conflicts in former Yugoslavia, where identities of people changed overnight uh, from one collective identity to another, uh, with the uh, uh, rise of nationalism and, and ethnic tensions and so forth. Uh, so we found this very uh, interesting, different way of looking at, at identity formation by looking at uh, what, what's going on with identity symbols, with the main bearers of identity of people uh, that had one meaning in one political context. What is going on with these sites in a completely different political context when it changed overnight? How are they surviving a new reality in post-conflict Bosnia and Herzegovina, for example? First of all, uh, once the political context changed and the former Yugoslavia broke apart and disappeared, disintegrated, uh, they lost all their meaning uh, and they were generally neglected uh, from being the main uh, tourist attractions and symbols of the state and, and bearers of national identity. All of a sudden they were merely uh, big concrete structures that nobody visited, nobody worked at, nobody uh, took any care of. Uh, so this was the kind of the first period of neglect. In some cases they were destroyed because they were perceived as threats to new identities. Uh, the old Yugoslav identity, the old Yugoslav uh, uh, collective being was a threat to the new. So they were either neglected or destructed. Uh, in very few places we find examples where people are actually taking care of the old, old uh, heritage from the Second World War. Now what happens now after the war is that there are some uh, some moves, some, some strategies on how to survive and find meaning in the new times. Uh, so we are seeing in, in some examples, we are seeing that monuments are being uh, reopened, uh, museums are being reopened, and uh, local uh, business communities investing and trying to attract tourists through Yugo nostalgia, uh, trying to offer to uh, people some sense of uh, their history, and people are actually coming back and, and uh, remembering good old days before the war. People are finding ways to attribute to these sites, to these places of remembrance and places of sorrow, uh, places of, of uh, history, to, to attribute a new meaning that it's more suitable for, for times of today. And as I said, uh, sometimes it's only cosmetic, it's in the nuances, sometimes it's quite blatant changing of history uh, to better fit. Uh, meta-narratives of national identity today to better fit ethnic or nationalist goals of, of, of certain parties or certain groups. Uh, so, so it's done in different ways. It's sometimes done for economic, uh, for financial gain, for tourism. Uh, other times it's done for political reasons. These uh, relics from the Second World War are, are uh, interesting in this sense because we, we see these processes how they how they actually are happening how how places of remembrance places of memory places of history how they get life in the right political context with the right message and how they disappear uh, into remembrance uh, when political context change and the main message and the main